All right, welcome back. It's another Finance Friday. Oluwato Sin Alashende, the founder of Money Africa, is joining me right now from Lagos. Hello, Tosin. Good to Hi, see Nancy. you. Hi, Nancy. How are you? I'm well. I'm good. How are you doing? Like the Yorubas, we great. say, the Yorubas, we say, Eku recession, no? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Since there's every <laughs> greeting. <laughs> Since there's every manner of greeting in Yoruba land, so a cool recession. I don't know how to translate that for our non-Yoruba speaking audience. I really don't know. I don't know if you can help me, but a cool recession, that is, what does it mean really, Tosi? It means this is what we are going to. This is our story. This is the situation. Yes, this is the situation. And that's why uh, we just have to discuss this personal finance navigation <laughs> at the recession. You know? A lot of us did have um, optimistic expectations for 2020, uh, in fact, but it seems that the world was not prepared for the kind of 2020 that we saw. Uh, the world is like suddenly woke up to COVID-19 pandemic, suddenly woke up to lockdowns, which we haven't seen in years, first time, like perhaps in a generation. And... Um, the virus spread quickly across our borders. What also came with the COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdowns are fluctuations in business cycles. So we have uh, uh, gloom, we also have doom. We have recession, we also have uh, a, a, a time of gloom. Can one really prepare for a recession? Especially that there were a lot of forecasts that came that we were gonna go into a recession. So would one have really prepared for a recession? Fantastic. Thank you so much, Nancy, for asking those questions. Now, i like for us to look at it in two ways. The first one is the macro way in things that, things that we cannot control, things that are beyond us. There's really nothing we can do about it. And the second way is for us to look at it from a micro point of view, that is the things that we have power over. So can we prepare for a recession, it depends. So now let's look at the numbers. If we look at Nigeria, for Nigerians, 58% of Nigerians spent a huge chunk of their money on things like food. Now in that situation, how much preparation can you actually do for recession? People that are close to the poverty line, there's really so much that you can do for the, for the situation. And that's why we are always asking for good policies, for systems to actually look after, so that those people that are very close to poverty line, or that are just right there, spending a huge chunk of their money on food, there is only so much preparation that can be done. Now for other people that have a little bit more room, that have a little bit more leeway, how can we prepare for recession? We always say things like, number one, we have to be very aggressive. Things, this is not the time to go for fancy purchases. This is not the time to go for things that we do not need. We're very aggressive about protecting our turf. So that way, we are focusing our energy on the critical, on the most important aspects. Also, for those that have a job, this is the time to outshine every other person so that even if they have to let people go, we're ensuring that we are retaining and we are keeping our source of income. So that way, we have a stream of, of flow continually, continuously coming in. Mm. Um, I would want to, we'll go back to that in a bit in terms of fancy purchases. And as an employee, you've got to protect your job at this time. It's one of the areas whereby you can get your personal finance intact. Because if you don't have your cash flow, your salary at the end of the month or wages, there's nothing that you will really lash onto. So I'll come back to that uh, in a bit. Uh, but how do you really right now prepare for the recession? Bearing in mind that this is an economy where most of us, the monies we make, three quarters of that, close to three quarters of that, go for food expenditure. So I'm still trying to make money and the monies I'm making going for food, prices of food on the increase right now. So how do you really now tell that person to prepare for recession when I, I, I'm, I'm scrambling for what to eat? 
To be really honest, Nancy, it's going to be a very tough one and it's going to be hard, to be very, very honest. I know that a lot of people talking now about saving and investing, but I think it's going to be very disrespectful if we're saying this to people that are actually really working hard when the situation really here is also looking for better economic um, policies, better principles. Nobody anticipated a double in price of food. Nobody saw it coming, right? And now, depending on what part of the country you are in, the price has really, really surged. But what can we do? One, we can hope and push for better policies because that is like the most important part of the mix. Then number two, we also have to ask ourselves, is there any other thing that we can do? Is there any other thing that we can exploit that we haven't done? Is there any other income generating revenue that we can actually look at? So now for it differs from people to people. For some people, the opportunity exists. For other people, they are really in a tight corner and there's really so much that they can do. So it's a tough call here, to be very honest. There is only so much you can do. So for, for those that actually have the opportunity to stretch it, so you're asking yourself, is there any other offering I can do? Can I sell my time more aggressively? Can I look for more people to be able to purchase things that I'm selling, right? All these other things, because the aim here is, there are two ways to make this work. Number one, you can either increase your income. Number two, you can cut down your expenses. So these are the two angles that we're looking at in terms of preparing for a recession. Can I increase my income in any way? And for my expenses, is there any other thing I can cut down without taking away the most important things that like people have to eat? There is, you can't cut out food, you have to eat. Mm. Okay, um, let, let's talk about the most important expenses because either you, you add to what you're making monthly or daily or whatever, or you cut down on your expenses if you're not able to make additional income. What are the basic expenses that people should be looking at right now during this recession? Fantastic. So the key expenses to be looking at right now, I mean, if you're looking at even the inflation numbers, there were two parts that were that jumped out at us. Number one is the food that we've all been speaking about. Number two is actually transportation costs. So for things like food, is there a way we could be more efficient? So for instance, buying in bulk, maybe we can team up with our neighbors. We all put money together to buy that bag of rice and split it. We all team up money together to buy that meat and cut it into smaller pieces. So how can we all join forces together to be able to to get some kind of reduction by buying in bulk. That is something to actually consider. Number two also is looking at waste. We have to be very aggressive about waste. You know, are we cooking too much? You know, can we reduce the things we cook? Are there things that we can supplement on the table? Like, you know, mixing things around and just basically trying to see how it can go further. Now, speaking about transportation costs, I remember that there was a time when a lot of people were going in the same direction, you know, driving in individual cars. Can we join forces together? Let's combine and energy together. And for those already using public transportation, there is only so much that you can cut down on those costs. If you have to go from point A to point B on a regular basis and you're already using public transportation, I really cannot see any other way where you can cut that cost, unless if you walk. And there are some distances that we cannot walk. So really, it's a really tight corner right now. And I think Another thing that is very important for us is for people to be kind to themselves. You know, if you've explored every means, you've done everything in your power, and you know, you still feel like you're in the corner, you know, it's, it's don't be too hard on yourself. It's really a tough time right now. Mm. Tosi, I like what you said in terms of, um, let's begin to team up, uh, especially now that food prices are on the increase, how we can really navigate that path. Uh, if you can really team up with your neighbors or your friends and perhaps buy a bag of rice or buy baskets of tomatoes, buy the onions that have turned to gold right now and try as much as possible to share it equitably. I also like the fact that you spoke about transportation. So we are giving people practical steps in terms of how to navigate uh, this uh, recession. But how about those that are in tight corners? Because you mentioned tight corners. And I must say that we have a lot of people in tight corners. In fact, we have more people in tight corners right now. I can imagine the barrel pushers in Wuse market or whatever market uh, in, in Nigeria right now. What will you be telling those people right now? <laughs> 
Nancy, you know, we've been thinking about this honestly. And I remember, you know, we we're even having a conversation with those that also help us at home, you know, asking them, how are you able, how are you navigating this, this period? It's a really tough time. I mean, we're going to the market, we're all seeing the prices. It's not them to say, it's, it's, it's in our faces, it's practical. In situations like this, I think also we also have to be um, more vigilant, right? Also be vigilant to the needs of those around us. You made a very, very important that those that are in a tight corner are more than those that are not. So we can see that it's not balanced. We're not, we're not seeing an equilibrium there. So in a situation like this, especially for low income earners, it is very, very hard to learn a new skill overnight. So even if we said that, oh, you can learn this new skill now that can generate you an income, it takes a while. It's easier for a person that is already like an, a mid income earner that has an existing skill to double up on that skill, as opposed to somebody that, for instance, is pushing wheelbarrow, having to quickly learn a new skill to transition would usually take time. So in situations like this, number one, we always say to people, there is no shame in reaching out for help. You know, try and ask other people, ask them, you know, are there other opportunities? Are there other things I can help you with? Are there other services I can offer that can perhaps, you know, earn me a little bit more? So these are honest conversations. So we also have to start looking in those ways. So let's say somebody during the day now, that person pushes wheelbarrow. Can that person double up as well? So maybe in the evening, they can also look after a little property or things like that. How else can can we be able to, you know, stretch or offer other services? So also, everybody also has to be vigilant right now, looking out for each other. Mm. We've got to be vigilant and we've got to be kind to one another. I think it's Ellen DeGeneres in the U.S. that always ends her show that will be kind to one another. And what a time to be kind uh, to one another right now. Tosi, you, you, you're the father of a community that... All of you come together, you talk investment, uh, you talk how to navigate different economic weathers and all of that. What have you been hearing from your community? What have, all, what have you been telling them right now? Great. So in terms of our community, I love to speak. Demographics are very important so that whenever we're given the solutions, the solutions are a bit fair. So what we've seen with our community members is that for a lot of them, they end somewhere between 30K to at least 150K on a monthly basis. And we keep telling them that how else can, are we able to navigate? One thing we are very aggressive about is about skills, right? We're looking for skills, skills, skills. What skills can we earn? What other thing can we do? What can we push that we can be able to generate more income? So as a community, that has been a very, very, very important topic for us, right? So how else can we stretch ourselves? If you're already baking cake, can you sell it instead? Can you, because now I think for every individual now you're looking for how can i steal from the pie of a bigger company so a, a service that a bigger company is already offering how can i go there for my own little pie so i can offer a similar service but in a more personalized offering something that is very human so that way i can also steal some revenue from them that's one thing we've been hammering on on our community number two another thing we've been speaking about a lot is about currency risk i mean nancy look at this we started the year with about 360 as of today the dollar is dancing at about 500 naira to the dollars. So can you be putting some of your savings or some of your investments in dollar-denominated assets? So you have things like a dollar-denominated fund like Euro bonds, and now, luckily, we can now start making those investments in smaller tranches. So there are lots of platforms that allows you to start investing with like 5K, 10K, in dollar denominated assets. You also have things like global shares where people can sit down in Lagos and being able to access global shares. Again, in little tranches, something like 5K, 10K, small by small, it trickles together and it starts growing over time. Another thing that we also want to keep reassuring our community members with is this, number one, recession, it will not go overnight. Remember that they've been telling us about this thing since March. So it's a gradual thing. We need to start changing our mindset. We need to start changing our habits. And we need to start doing it on a regular, gradual basis before we actually start seeing the full impact of the effect. Do, do you think that you've seen a gradual growth of Nigerians in terms of financial literacy? I know when I started years and years ago, and I can say even the growth, a lot more people are interested even watching my show and saying thank you at least for bringing us this every day. Have you seen growth in terms of financial literacy? Because all this still dovetails to information. 
Nancy, I want to seize this opportunity to say a big thank you to the Morning Line with Nancy and every other person behind it because you guys are doing a fantastic job, right? You're doing an amazing job. Even though this has been a very tough year, I have to be honest that for our company, this has been one of the best years because now people are listening. They are awake. You know what the, what the, um, what the COVID-19 did was? It reminded people of what retirement could look like. Remember at the beginning of COVID when they were locking up, you know, people did not know what was going to happen with their income. And for those that had an income, they didn't know how it was going to grow. It felt like retirement. It felt like, my goodness, how about when I get old and I'm not able to earn income anymore, what will happen? So you're, it was almost as though it was a snapshot of what the future could look like. So people started waking up. Oh my goodness, I have to start saving. I have to start investing. We have not gotten as much um messages emails and sales like we did this year because now people are more aware and i'm very happy that we're now having this conversation it's a very very important conversation i was speaking to a gentleman he's in his late 40s and he was telling us that we are doing a great job i'm talking about everybody in the financial literacy space that when he was much younger after he got his first job he was just literally leaving from hand to mouth till he had to till he got married and he had kids and the expenses were staring him in the face so we don't have to wait for other young people to go through that motion before they realize that, ha, it's time to wake up and take my finances by the horn. So I'm very, very happy. And thanks, guys, for always having this conversation and always educating people. Mm. So do you think that people have learned their lessons? Because COVID-19 made us learn hard lessons. In fact, for me, earlier on during the lockdowns, I said it, I think, in March and April, I found out that I could even live with a lot of things I thought I could live without, that I couldn't live without. You know, so, and since then, you know, I've tried as much as possible to also cut down, you know, but you also see that there will be some kind of exigencies and people learned their lessons the hard way. So do you think that Nigerians have indeed learned their lessons the hard way amid the crisis? I'm, yes, not, coming, I'm not coming up with excuses because the crisis yeah. can also be a fantastic excuse not to get your financial life straightened up you know what well you know it was it, it's a very sad you know a lot of people um you know passed on and all of that but we also have to say that what are the lessons that people uh, learned from covid 19 and i can tell you that it was a whole lot right a whole lot many people have literally turned around changed their lives you know taking all those lessons into account they've changed their habits their they, a lot of people were telling me that Tosin, this time last year, I bought like 10 and show B. You know, now with all this COVID thing, I've changed. I don't do it anymore. And now, you know, because people are staying at home, they're able to see all the expenses that used to go away that they didn't have an opportunity to spend anymore. So it's been a blessing in disguise to a certain extent that a lot of people are learning and they are now seeing that, you know, what? how can I get better? Or some can even start looking back all the money I wasted for the past five years, you know. Imagine if I had just been saving and investing it. And there's something I love to say. You do not learn how to fight at the battlefront. You do not. You learn how to fight so that when the battle comes, you are ready. And that's the same thing with your personal finance. You don't wait for emergencies. You don't wait for COVID-19. You start preparing beforehand. You start exercising. You start energizing. You start putting in all the different lessons so that when the battle comes, we are actually ready for it. Okay. Um, for those watching and you want to ask any questions, please feel free to do that right now on our social media handles. You can check us out on Twitter, Moneyline TV. You can also tweet me at Nancy uh, Ilo uh, Naji. That's hyphen Naji on Twitter. Atose, uh, I like the fact that you spoke about Ashwebi and you made me recall sometime earlier this year, was it last year? One of the Finance Fridays when I had my guest and he, a man, did also talk about Ashwebi's. And I remember even subsequently I was talking to women because we are the guilty ones in terms of Ashwabi. Every Saturday, every weekend there's a party. And the party comes with Ashwabi. And the Ashwabis are, you know, in thousands. So if you can save that. I'm not saying now those that are involved in that business now will be almost saying, Nancy, what are you talking about? Don't you think it's a business? The women in Balogun market are cool. So <laughs> looking at all of this, bringing all those kind of monies at, at, together, do you think that people have already been able to streamline to the basics being forced by the pandemic. The basics such as food, uh, perhaps paying rent, perhaps paying your children's school fees, and um, 
clothing, uh, clothing right now may not even be as a basic thing because you just be wearing, be wearing the ones you've had. It's true. That's what COVID has done. Even for entertainment, mm. for a very long period of time, the movies were closed, the clubs were closed, the dining areas were closed. So people were forced to cook at home. They were forced to do all the basics, right? They were literally showing them the reality of what they would have spent if there was no COVID. So basically just looking at those numbers that if there, if, like if you had to stay at home, if you had to cut away certain things, this is how much you actually be spending. Also, Nancy, we did an analysis, right? We told our community members that everybody should go to their wardrobe, open your wardrobe, we are putting calculators, start punching it. How much is the value of your wardrobe? They were shocked. Some people came back with 3 million naira. Some people came back with 2 million. This is people that are saying that, those saying there's no money, oh, there's no money. When they put calculator and they started counting the value of their wardrobe, shoes, bags, clothes, everything, they were in absolute shock. They couldn't believe it. And that's the same thing with investing. We just have to be putting it small by small by small and it grows over time. Tosi, is that really bad if, for example, I'm making my money? Is that really bad that I can count clothing worths of three million jewelries, shoes, and what have you in my closet if I'm making the money? And if I'm investing, if I'm doing all what I'm required to do, is it bad? Because perhaps those people also need to be in business. Absolutely, you've made a very valid point. It's not a bad thing. The only reason why it is bad is because many people do not do it with a balance. So they have more value in their wardrobes than they have in their investment accounts. And what we are teaching is balance. Because at the end of the day, Nancy, why are we making money? Nobody's going to take money to heaven or to every other place that people believe they will go to afterwards. So why are we making money? So you need to be able to ask yourself those questions. But if people actually have all this investment, heavily invested in consumables, cars, clothes, shoes, and then they have nothing to fall back on, that is a big problem and that is the problem we are fighting mm. you you mentioned earlier what kind of uh, investments are uh, recession proof right now dollar denominated funds and all of that are there some kind of investments that people shouldn't make in a recession yes there are so there are some types of investment that people shouldn't make in, in recession. And these are number one, the overly mouth-watering ones. Now, Nancy, Christmas is here. I mean, I'm talking about in the next, what, 25 days thereabout. So people have started selling them all the schemes. Like, you know what? If you bring in your money by this or so amount, you know, you have 20%, you have 30%. But if we're being honest, it's not going to happen. The period is too short. So we keep telling people that. Please, guys, there's a recession on the market. There will be enticing offers, but please do not go for it. Every time you have to invest is a fundamental principle. The principles do not change. Number one, what is the asset back in this investment? I need to be able to understand it and be able to explain it to a six-year-old. So if you're talking about an agri-tech, for instance, where is the farm? Who are the people managing it? What is the duration of that farm? If they're telling you that a farm will give you so much money within 20 days, we know it's a lie. 20 days is a very short period of time for you to see a full cycle. So you're asking all those honest and genuine questions. So your fundamental analysis has to be done properly. So whether we are talking about shares or we are talking about money market mutual fund or we are talking about agri tech, you always have to ask the fundamental question. So now back to your question. Are there things that we should not be investing during a recession Yes, stay away from anything that looks too quick, too fancy, trying to promise you something very fast because, you know, um, there's a Christmas coming up or there's something happening, you know, don't, don't, don't do it. Stay away. Tosi, it's, it's a, a bit uh, uh, difficult right now to analyze that Nigerian stocks are on the upside for the past few months. And normally in a recession, you don't see the stock market on the increase. But the Nigerian market so far, year to date, has a return of close to 30%. Investors are going in right now and creaming out. Is it an investment outlet? Should I invest in stocks right now? If I have a bit of That's cash. a very good question. We have this policy that we always do and we always treat with our, 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 our members. We say this, cost averaging. So what is cost averaging? Cost averaging means that I make my investment on a regular basis and I'm not chasing prices. I mean, let's look at GTB, for instance. During the COVID-19, GTB went to about 16 Naira. Now, that same GTB crossed 35 Naira. 
all in the space of a year. Now, sometimes the market fluctuates. Sometimes it goes high. Sometimes it goes down. Now, the thing about this kind of investment is we always tell people, treat it like groceries. So you know the way we eat every month, the same way on a monthly basis you're doing your investment. So I have a portion of my money going towards safety that I can sleep at night. I have a portion of my money going towards shares that is taking a little bit, it's taking some risk. I have a portion of my money going towards, you know, other high kind of risk. So you apportion it in such a way that you are doing it regularly. So the days that it's going high, it profits you. The days that it is going low, you are reducing your costs that you initially entered. So please stay with me. I want to do a quick example. Let's say in January, I bought a particular share for 20 Naira and I bought 1,000 units. That's 20,000 Naira, right? The next month, that same share dropped to 15 Naira. Again, I bought 1,000 units. That's 15,000 Naira. Now, the next month again, that same share dropped to 10 Naira. I bought again 1,000 units. That's 10,000. If we look at it over the space of three months, what has happened? My average price is actually what 15 Naira. So some people might have gotten it at 10 Naira. At 10 Naira, some people might have gotten it at 20 Naira. But because I invest my money regularly, I'm able to have a nice cost average without the headache of chasing investment up and down. So that's what we always advise. Do your investments regularly like groceries and do not chase the market. Do not time the market. With this example which you've made right now, at what point do I sell? Because if, if the question. stocks are coming, if the prices are coming down, at what point do I sell if I do not have more risk appetite to stay? I know why I'm Fantastic. sticking a bit on stocks because it seems to be doing well right now. And even mutual I funds know. that are based on stocks are doing well right now, but a bit of risk is also there. So at what point do I sell? That's a very good one, Nancy. I think we always tell people that people should have their exit price. So for instance, let's say you've made about 100% on that particular share. You told yourself, ah, I'm happy. 100% return is good for me. Sell it. For another person, it might be 25%. Sell it. For another person, it might be, oh, I want to give this shares to my daughter when she's getting married. I want to give it to my son when he starts university. Then you can continue to hold on to it. So it depends on your, um, your outlook or your your strategy for that particular market. Mm. Okay, let's talk about, I want to take you back to what we talked about earlier in terms of uh, shopping and in terms of, pro uh, that's fancy purchases, cutting out fancy purchases, and in terms of protecting the jobs. Uh, how should people that are salary earners, wage, daily wage earners, protect their seemingly eroding wealth? Do we even have wealth in Nigeria? The world's poverty capital, so I don't think there's wealth there. But a lot, a lot of people don't have lost their jobs. Some are still earning salary right now. How should they manage at this point? How should they protect their cash? How should they shelter their crash from this turbulent storm? It was Mrs. Ibuku Awoshika I heard some time ago. They say, don't eat your tomorrow's wealth today. So what should they do? That's Ibuku Awoshika is the first bank chairman. Fantastic woman, by the way. But, <laughs> you know, don't eat your tomorrow's wealth today. So what should those people do? People that are earning 50, 70, 80,000 Naira. And that I'm take really like 500 Naira home a day, a day. Fantastic. I'm really happy that you're saying this. We always advise for three things. Number one, protect the source. So that way we're going to work regularly. We're doing a great job. We're trying to protect that particular source of income. Number two, you need to draw up a budget. Many people do not like budget. They feel like it's a controlling thing that, ah, it's telling me to do this. It's telling me to do that. But Nancy, do you know that a lot of multinationals, they spend so much money in actually getting a team to draw up a budget and chase that budget. Nancy, do you know that there are some companies that sell our data to people? So for instance, they say that, oh, there's a 30 year old woman she lives on Lagos Island. She goes to shop right to buy things of 20K every week. You know why they're getting all this data? They're getting this data so that they can produce products for me or produce products for that person, right? So if our information is important to other people, why are we not using it for ourselves? So the very next thing we always tell people that any regular income is to please drop a budget. You need to know where your money is going. So that way I can tell myself I'm earning 80,000 on a monthly basis and I want to be investing 15,000 naira monthly or I want to be investing 20,000 naira monthly. When you have a budget, it's easier to stick with it so that it's not just vibes or, you know, as things goes or, you know, as things happen, we can be able, it's easier to be 
able to stick with the plan. Great. Okay. So we've spoken about the number one, protect your job. Number two, draw up a budget. Number three, invest regularly. Okay. And every month, as long as you're going to eat, you must also make sure that you're setting something aside for the future. And we are doing it consistently. Okay. Also, for a lot of salary earners, please, you also have to have some exposure to dollar-denominated assets. Because if you compare that salary you're earning today to five years ago, let's change it to dollars. You are now at a loss. You are earning less today than you were earning five years ago because of the exchange rate, the purchasing power that has stripped value for that income. So please also be investing in some dollar-denominated assets. Okay, Tosi, in just uh, 15 seconds, if you can, because I've got to go, someone sent me a tweet and said, uh, for concerning the stock market, if I buy 10% equity stake of a company, does that mean that's 10% of stocks of the company? Does that mean I'm an owner of 10% of the company? <laughs> Absolutely, that's what it means. And on the general stock market, it's very hard to actually be an investor buying 10% of that if you're not like a, you know, a multinational, like a financial institution okay. or a big man. But maybe for startups and for other ones, that's actually what it means. Tosi. Mm. Thank you very much for bringing in your perspectives and I hope my viewers are a bit better in terms of financial literacy today. I will see you soon, let's hope, before Christmas so that we can talk about Christmas shopping. Black Friday today, people will go shopping. But uh, in fact, a colleague sent me uh, a, a, a note uh, uh, via WhatsApp to say some people detest that today should be called Black Friday. But uh -uh, it's not that deep <laughs> now. <laughs> But whatever it is, it's being done across the world. Thank you very much, Tosi, uh, for your Thank time. Thank you for having me, Nancy. Thank you. All right, I've been speaking with Oluwa Tosi Olashayide, the founder of Money Africa. And we've been looking at your personal finance, navigating it within a recession. That's the much we can take today. Thank you for your company today as well as this week. Please join us again next Monday. On behalf of my team and I, be the best you can be. I am Nancy Naji. Bye now. <laughs>